like the, the, the mass of the, the structure before putting breasts on top because breasts are kind of, well, they're added on top and they, they, uh, they're almost like clothes. They're added on top and they don't have a lot of relationship to the structure underneath the skeletal system. So you want to kind of build a foundation before adding siding, which is a really funny way of describing breasts. Uh, decoration, whatever. Um, but it's a mass that sits on top, so I like to try to draw the, to establish the, the underlying structure before I get to it. Now I am going a little fast because I'm trying to finish this demo without make, making it too long. Just, you know, as you can see, the arm here obscures the back of the spine, but it kind of, it comes in and then goes out like this. So there's an S curve that goes bloop, bloop, bloop. It's like a double S curve. Then I'm gonna simplify the hands there. And the neck projects forward. The chin is there. You, you see a little bit of the shoulder blades back here. Even if their uh, shoulders are thrown back, but the shoulder blades are the farthest point out on the upper back. Note, this is, a, this is worth, worth uh, mentioning, is the front of the pelvis, uh, the pelvic bone that sits up here, Right here, it this edge of the thigh comes up and then the, the front part of the hip bone is right about there and the abdomen, kind of like just the, the, the tummy, sticks out farther right there, okay? So this line comes into here and the abdomen's there. And of course, breasts have a certain amount of weight to them, a sag. So the mass, the, the curve on the bottom is very different from the curve on the top. It's kind of a teardrop shape as it kind of hangs out and chills there. Do, do, do. Okay, uh, last but not least, the rear view. We can take these proportions, move them across. I'm going to start again with the the rib cage. Kind of an upside down egg shape. And then pelvis. Proportionately wider on women than men, of course. And on some people, of course, you don't have like a flush meeting of the two thighs in the middle. There can be, when somebody's knees or ankles are tucked together, everybody's going to be different. Sometimes there's a gap there that even when your knees are tucked in, uh, there'll be a gap, just depending on how you're put together. So... Just simplifying everything into basic shapes. This is kind of a mix between a triangle and a cylinder. Y 
use the center line to keep things symmetrical. There's a lot of S curves on the body and sometimes they're subtle. So this one goes out, in, out, out, in, out. That's what the shoulder blades look like. They're, 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 because they're covered in skin, you don't see so much detail, but but there's they're shaped like this, right? Kind of like a steak. But this part where it is right here is where you tend to notice uh, it protruding a little bit. And there's a head. For whatever reason, Andrew Loomis decided to draw her arm poking up this way. So we're just gonna do that. Nothing wrong with that. It's just a different position to, to experiment with. Note how the back here, this line obscures part of the arm. So the arm kind of goes into it and it, and that edge is covered up by, uh, by the back. You see that all the time in, uh, here the arm comes up and it's interrupted by the rib cage and the breast and this pectoral muscle underneath the breast. So anytime you see a line, that comes up like this, and then another line that comes like that, it's assumed that this form goes behind that other form. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the demo there. I think that should be enough to help you get started. Using the center lines and those head heights should help you keep things on track. And in the next video, we will look at doing the same for the male body. All right. Peace out.